Shake your broom and shake your broom and shake your broom. <laughs> shake your broom. <laughs> that was my new song. Hope you liked it. <laughs> Perfect opening to that video, thank you. It's perfect, it goes right along with the video. You gave, gave me some editing practice to cut that out and then I'll be better at editing. You know the drill, he doesn't cut it out cause I'm hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> All right, the friends, this video, I am going to share with you how to break through a weight loss plateau with five simple fixes. If you don't know, sassy boy behind the camera and myself, Nicole, ee, have lost 130 pounds and kept it off for six years. After we lost our first 100 pounds, we both hit a plateau. Our weight loss slowed down and then stopped altogether. And we panicked. We tried to speed up the weight loss by taking away whole food groups, which just ended up in us backfiring. Not, but it ended up in us going off track and we ended up gaining 10 pounds. And then we ended up deciding, hey, what if we did simple fixes that were sustainable? It worked and we were able to lose the 10 pounds that we gained and the remaining 30 each that we still had left to lose. So this is what we did. The first one, were you gonna say something? No, I always open my mouth just randomly. <laughs> Watch. All right, sassy. <laughs> you can't see, but he's opening some mouth behind the camera. Oh my goodness. Okay, number one. Well, I was gonna say something. Oh, we'll say it. I would say, especially lately, this is the number one question we get asked. People are stuck. They're stalled. They're hitting plateaus. How did you guys break it? First of all, I want to say weight loss plateaus are normal. After you've been losing weight for quite a while, your body gets used to it. It doesn't like changing. The body is stubborn. So it will slow down or stop because it gets used to what you're doing and you've got to change it up. So the first thing that we did, increase cardio, but not crazy, just by five or 10 minutes a day or add an extra session per week. Like if you're doing three sessions of cardio per week, you can do four. Or if you're doing, we were doing like 20 minutes a day, go to 25 minutes a day. Very small increase, not, nothing crazy. Or you can up your intensity a little bit as well. The second one, here you reduce your portions. We took food groups away, we took treats away, that just ended up in us going off track. So reduce your portions by just a little bit. For example, if you're having a whole, we were having a whole cup of rice, we went to three quarters of a cup of rice for a meal. And that's what you know? worked. Because a lot of people say, oh, you just eat less to lose weight. Well, yeah, but if you got brains like me and Nicole do, we go really extreme on stuff. So when you say eat less, we go to starvation mode, which is not good. It backfires like Nicole said. Yeah, we pull away way too much. When you say, you know, we heard, you know, years ago in the media, carbs are bad. We take away all carbs. And then we try to still train like maniacs too. Exactly, so we kept all the food groups in, we put the treats back in, and all we did was reduce it a little bit. 50 to 100 calories a day. That's it at the start. And then do it for a couple of weeks and see if anything changes. And that might even be a lot, like depending on how much exercise you're doing. And if, yeah. you, if you only have like five pounds, 10 pounds to lose, a hundred calories might be way too much. So yeah. go, you know, read the room basically, listen to your body. Everybody's different, that's what worked for us, was to pull away just a little bit a day. So do what works for you, do it for a couple of weeks and see what happens and then make another small change like that. The third one, we he's opening his mouth again. I wish you could see what sassiness goes on behind the camera. <laughs> okay, number three, journal your food. So we did this for a full year, but then we stopped right around the time we hit the plateau. We went back to journaling for two full weeks because it helps you see exactly what you're eating. You might be accidentally not counting something, um, or accidentally not counting it. Yeah. Because even like a lot of people say, oh, you guys had each other to be accountable. 
when I was stuck in my emotional eating, I would lie. That's so I, I could be around a hundred people or no people and I would lie because I wasn't having it accountable. At least even if you're going to overeat, write it down. Exactly. Yeah. Be totally honest with what you're putting in. You need to see what food you're eating, how much you're eating and include everything so that you can see, okay, maybe I can pull back a little here or, oh, I over measured here and didn't count for it. It allows you to see what you're doing and it holds you accountable. It also allows you to see like, are you skipping meals somewhere? Like there were days where we would skip breakfast and we would be so hungry by the end of the day, we would end up eating everything in sight. So if you're skipping a meal or you're adding food in or you're not counting for it, it allows you to see it. Also, we tracked our water intake too. If you're not drinking enough water, one, your body doesn't function properly. Two, your body when it's hot dehydrated actually can send you signals that it's hungry. So you eat when you really what you need is water. So journal your food and water for two weeks and see what you need to, to fix basically. It's an easy way to do it. Number four, this goes a little bit with number three. Be sure that you're tracking everything. Often people will not think to count that splash of milk they added to their coffee or a little bit of sugar that they add to their coffee. A teaspoon of sugar is 15 calories. So if you're adding these little things throughout the day and thinking, well, cooking spray says no calories, I won't account for it, or I'll do a big spray and not add it in. You're adding calories and they add up quickly and you're not realizing you're not eating in a calorie deficit when you think that you are. So this point is really special actually. We added it in because a lot of people don't even consider cream food, yeah. uh, the cooking spray food. It's all calories. And liquid. I think I, I'm going to check my cheat sheet. Oh yeah. Liquid calories here. I want to add in. Coffee, two cups of coffee is like 10 calories. If you're drinking black coffee and you think, oh, it's low calorie, I'm not gonna add it in. Those 10 calories add up and up and up and then you're over the calories you're supposed to be taking in to lose weight and you didn't even realize it. Literally everything, every pinch of salt, every seasoning, everything, write it down, track it and count for it. It all counts. The BCAAs that me and Nicole drink, they might say zero calories. They might say five calories. We do a heaping scoop. Um, or some people don't count those things, the additives. And food companies are allowed to lie by a certain percent. So yes. anything you can eat, just account, it has some calories in it. Actually, what we do when we eat the kernel seasoning for our popcorn, it says zero calorie for a certain amount. I usually add 25 calories because I know, okay, there's got to be some calories and I'm going to just go a little bit over so that I'm not um, like I'm going to overestimate how many calories it is so that I'm not going out of my calorie deficit. And the food companies generally tell you what you want to hear. So they're yeah. going to tell you that you're eating less than you are. Exactly. And last point. Do not eyeball portions. Do not eyeball your food. A lot of people will say, oh, I'm eating a salad. I can just eat as much as I want. Remember from the first few tips, the first few fixes, all calories count. If you eyeball, you have no idea how many calories you're taking in. Use either measuring cups and spoons like we did. And if you want to get really accurate, look on the serving sizes for grams per serving and measure it on a food scale. Nothing is 100% accurate, but that will get you more accurate. It will give you a better idea of how much you're taking in. Eyeballing, even using like those hand portions that you see all over the internet of like, they're a good idea. Like, you know, like I think like a thumb is a tablespoon of oil or something like, those are okay, but they're not gonna be 100% accurate. It's very easy to overeat there. And a lot of people we see making healthier choices, choosing a salad, whatever, but they're not measuring their salad dressing, which could contain way more calories than the entire bowl of salad itself. Oh yes, that's very true. And that reminds me of something, cooking oil. A lot of people don't account for the oil that they're cooking in. That still counts because it's going into your food. It's being absorbed in there. And I'm gonna throw in a bonus before we end this. Um, the one thing that happened is because, you know, it's, 
after a year, we lost 100 pounds. We became comfortable with what we were doing. And so when we would scoop our peanut butter at night, we used a measuring spoon, but it would get a little more rounded every day until there was a, probably two or three tablespoons in that one tablespoon because it, it literally looked like that. So really make sure that you're calling yourself on it. If you're going overboard, account for the overboard. It's okay to eat more, but you have to count for it so you can still be in a calorie deficit to lose the weight. So we get a lot of people commenting saying, I'm doing all of these things, but I'm still not losing weight. I'm eating in a calorie deficit. What do I do? What Kyle and I had to do at a certain point is go, okay, if we're doing all of this and we're pretty sure we're eating in a calorie deficit, we're doing all these fixes and we're not losing weight, then that means if you're not losing weight, you have to eat less or do more cardio. Or both. Or both. So that's why in the fixes we said, increase your cardio a little bit. Just pull back a little bit on your food. You might think you're eating in a calorie deficit, but like I said earlier, you might forgot that you drank a coffee and didn't account for the calories. So eat a little less and see if that works or do a little more cardio and eat a little less. And for me and Nicole, we always, always pick to a little more movement of our body during yeah. the day rather than take away food. Yeah, because we love to eat. And the thing is, it's normal to hit plateaus. It's normal to, you know, not realize that you're eating more. Just keep tracking it. Keep trying. It's trial and error. When you find what works, stick to it until it doesn't and then try again. That's that's what a journey is. And we love it. Love your food, love what you do, and this is how we do it here. So the friend, <laughs> if you wanna know exactly what we ate to lose our first and next 50 pounds, we have two weight loss guides in the links down below. Exact portions, exact meal plans, family-friendly recipes that we made in eight cylinder, and we have a brand new guilt-free cookbook. The link is down there. It is low-calorie version of all of your favorite food without the guilt and extra calories. And you can watch these two videos for free. Now we gonna, you thought I was gonna say beam, PG for you too, this beam. Shake your broom and shake your broom and shake your broom. Shake your broom. That was my new song. Hope you liked it. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for watching. Like, subscribe, notification bell, all that stuff. Love ya. Thanks for watching. Peace out. Peace. Remember the friends that weight loss isn't just about the number on the scale. It's also about here and here. Heart and mindset. Fight through it. You can do it. Don't give up.